Hi everyone, Janie here, and today I'm going to be making an altered cigar box, and I'm going to take you through it step by step from beginning to end. But I'm also putting a link below to another video I made doing a different altered cigar box because I wanted you to see more than one. So you can look at that later, but right now, let's head on over to the craft table and get started on the one I'm doing today. This is the cigar box that I decided to use. I thought it was cute because it has this nice little sliding lid. But cigar boxes come in all different sizes, all different styles, and if you decide to do this project, I'm sure you're going to find a cigar box that will work perfectly for you. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint the box with this Martha Stewart um, satin acrylic paint. It is called Ballet Slippers. And even though most of the box is going to be covered by things I'm going to be adding, like paper and um, trim and that kind of stuff, I still want the entire box to have a smooth um, layer of paint all over it for when I'm working on it. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to paint it. Um, I'm going to be careful to not paint these edges because it will interfere with it sliding in and out. And look at that, I can't even do it from this direction. There we go. So let's get started on the painting. cigar box is drying, I got ready for my next step. I'm going to be applying paper to the box. And so I have this really beautiful floral print that I printed off on a linen paper. So it has a really nice linen texture to it and I love that. And I've already got it cut to the sizes that I'm going to need for each side. And then I did something else to it that I wanted to tell you about, and it's really important. I sprayed it with this Krylon UV resistant clear acrylic coating. And you're wondering why and what does it do to it? It just protects it. Um, it protects it against harmful UV light rays. It's non-yellowing, it's a permanent coating, it's moisture resistant, it dries in minutes. So, it really, you know, with this being paper that I'm putting on there, I don't want it to get messed up. I don't want it to fade. I don't want it to get water damaged. So this is how I'm going to protect it. And I'm also going to give it another coat after I get it um, attached to the box. So I wanted to let you know, really good thing to do when you're paper crafting, especially if it's going to be something as nice as what we're going to be making. So with that done, as soon as the cigar box is dry, we're going to start putting that on there. I gave the cigar box a second coat of paint and it's dry now and we're ready to go on to the next step, which is where I'm going to adhere my paper to each side of the box. So before I get started on that, I just wanted to point out if you thought the lighting was different, it probably is because I had to open up a shade on the window to let in some extra light because a couple of my bulbs on the ceiling went out. So lighting might be a little different. So the way that I'm going to be adhering the paper to the box is using this. It's a spray adhesive and I've used it many, many times with good results and I really like it. And the reason why I want to spray adhesive is because it will cover the back of the paper completely so that I don't have to worry about, you know, a spot bubbling up. And I seem to have that problem when I use Mod Podge because I must be doing something wrong. I know many people use Mod Podge and it works out great. And if you are really good at it, then, you know, you can use that instead. 
but I have to work extremely quick once I spray it to get this adhered on there. So bear with me when I do this. Be right back. The pretty paper is now on there, and I gave it a once over with the same UV resistant clear acrylic coating that I did before, just for a little extra protection. And next, I'm going to be adding these beautiful flat back pearls that I got from Creating with Details, and I'm going to be adding them right around the top. And then later I'll be adding other things, but <laughs> we're going to start with this. And since I don't like to use hot glue or um, a wet glue that might ooze up between all of those little spaces, what I'm going to be using is some scrappy tape. It's um, double sided and it has worked really well on craft projects in the past. So that's what we're doing now. Okay, there we go. Isn't that just beautiful? Now, if anybody's wondering why I didn't put it across the back, is because that's where the lid slides in and out. And so not only is the positioning wrong, but it would also get in the way of opening and closing. So we're just doing it to the front and sides. And now I'm going to put some around the lid also. These pearls are such a beautiful touch. I really do love these flat back pearls. They're easy to work with and they're just gorgeous. So, so far so good. I have a lot more decorating to do, but before I go any further with that, I need to put on these little legs. That way, you know, nothing gets in the way of that. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. These are gorgeous. Let's see if I can get, get the detail in there. Whoops. These are also from Creating with Details. She has so many wonderful things in her shop, perfect for any altered project, especially cigar boxes in my opinion. Um, I've done another cigar box with um, things from Creating with Details. So this is my second one. So I'm gonna be attaching all four legs and I'm going to be using E6000. It's something I'm not really familiar with, but I've seen others use it um, for attaching things like this. So that's what happens next. I didn't want to make you sit through all four legs because I do put pressure on them for a while, but I wanted to show putting on one of them. So I'm going to put some E6000 right down in here. I don't want to put on so much that it oozes out. And I don't know if I can show you on here good, but 
I put it up the back as well and in these little spaces, but you just don't want it oozing all over your project. So you have to be careful about that. Watch for it if it does. All right, let me get this going the right direction. And see if I can get it in the camera here. There we go, it sits on like that. And what I like to do is put pressure on it for a while to make sure that it really adheres. And I've got a little oozing out the bottoms here, which is fine, that's on the bottom. But that's how you put them on. And just, I don't have any real directions. I just like to do this. I like to hold them on for a little while, make sure that they're really adhering. But that's how easy it is to put these on. They actually do have little holes in the bottom. So if you had little tiny screws or little tiny nails and you wanted to put it on that way, you can do that as well. So that's really nice. These are real quality, real quality product right here. Aren't those legs just gorgeous? So, now we're ready for the next step. Now it's time to add this absolutely gorgeous trim. I think it's so beautiful and elegant and exactly what this box needs. And I'm gonna be attaching that using my Beacons 3-in-1. You can use your hot glue gun if you want. And I'm actually going to start on the front. So I'm gonna have some hanging over the side here. Um, I already know that that'll fit to the back. And the reason why I'm starting on the front is that I wanna make sure that everything is lined up right where I want it. And then I can work around the rest of the box. So. Let me just kind of move this out of the way a little bit. And get a little bit of this glue going along here. You just put in a really thin strip. That's all I'm going to need. This stuff holds really well. Okay. And turn it toward me a little bit more here. Okay, looks like I got it exactly where I want it. Nice and centered. Make sure that it's attached really well. I like the beacons because it is a quick tack glue, so you know it holds on right away. But also because it doesn't completely dry, allowing you to move it if you need to. And in this case, I really don't need to. All right, that side done. I'll turn it over and do this side. Okay, and now that you're getting the idea of what I'm doing, I'm going to speed things up a little bit while I finish this. Well, what do you think so far? I think it's coming out absolutely beautiful. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is decorating the lid. And one of the things I'm going to decorate it with is this gorgeous filigree butterfly. Let's see if I can get it where you can see all the detail. It's very beautiful. 
I absolutely love it. And I love that I could bend the wings up so that when it's on there, it's not laying flat. See how the wings are bent? So it looks like it's in flight, kind of. And I'm going to take some of the flat back pearls. I cut off a piece that will fit nicely right there in the center of the butterfly. And I hate covering up anything on here. It's so pretty, but I am going to. So to put that on, I'm going to use this fantastic glaze and glue that I use um, while making jewelry. I think it'll be perfect for this. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. And Perfect. And before I can put that on here, I'm going to have to let that dry. So I'll be back in a little bit. While the butterfly is drying, this might be a good time to add this beautiful rose that I'm going to put right up here on top. And that's going to be where you push to open and close the box. And I'm going to use the same glaze and glue that I used on the butterfly. So let me put a little bit of this back here. And let me find my spot right there. All right, there we go. And we'll just set that right there to dry. And by the time the butterflies dry, that'll be dry, and I'll be ready to attach the butterfly. I'm ready to add the finishing touch, and I will be using glaze and glue to do that as well. So let me get it turned my direction here. And a little right here on the back. getting it positioned just the way I want, which is slightly at an angle. Okay. There we go, but I have to let that dry. I don't dare tilt it forward for you right now. There it is. I love this box. It came out exactly how I pictured it. And for those of you that are wondering what I'm going to be doing on the inside, I haven't yet decided, but I think I'm probably going to line it with some pink felt. What do you think? Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I would love to hear your comments and thoughts on it. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. It would be really appreciated. Also, if you aren't already one of my subbies, I would love it if you were. Thank you all so much and happy crafting. Bye-bye.